In previous videos, we connected our ultrasonic 4 to 20 milliamp signal to IO Link, and we have it configured in the Compact Logix in Studio 5000. And it's coming across in two small integers. So as I move my finger across the ultrasonic sensor, you see both of these are changing. And a lot of you get to right here, and I see all types of crazy things done to try to combine these two. Now, the thing you have to remember is in the end, all numbers are binary. And all we got to do is figure out how to line those numbers up. <laughs> The first thing we got to do is combine these two. And a lot of people use the bit distributes and you see all types of output energizers and crazy things, but all we need to do is use a copy instruction to combine them. Let's open up our main routine and let's bring down a copy instruction. That is on the file miscellaneous tab, COP. You can also, in this case, use the CPS. It's not gonna matter really for this particular application. And for our source, we're going to put in this first number right here, iolink colon i dot data 100. So I'm just going to copy that and we're going to paste it into the source. And then we're going to need a destination. I am going to call this my analog raw. Now the trick is to figure out what data type raw should be, because if we just create it, it's going to come up as a double integer. And that's going to be a 32-bit number. But if we look here, this is a small integer or an 8-bit number. So if we're going to combine two of those, we only need 16 bits. And that's simply an INT. Right-click Analog Raw, New. And on that data type, change that to an INT and hit Create. And then we're gonna do a length of one. Now let's take just a second to understand why we're doing this length of one. If we go to the instruction help and we look at this length, it's the number of destination elements to copy. And that's gonna be bitwise. So since we have 16 bits in our destination and we have a length of one, that's gonna copy 16 bits up here. And that's gonna get you data 100, zero through seven, and data 101, 0 through 7. And let's put this in and see what we get. Now, so we can see this value while we're doing this work, let's go to View and Watch. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to put Analog Roll in. And that's going to give us the value of that. And notice while we're sitting here, it's bouncing between a negative 1900 and a negative 3900. That's the first indication that we do not have the bits in the right order. And a lot of times this just takes a little guesswork to kind of figure out how to line these up. What's happened in this case is that data 100 and data 101, when we brought them in, they are backwards. So bits 0 through 7 are sitting where bits 8 through 16 are, and bits 8 through 16 are sitting where bits 0 through 7 are. And to fix that, we're going to use a swap byte instruction, and it's on the Move Logical tab. So let's start a rung edit and bring it down. And our source is going to be analog raw. And just to show you what most people are going to do, just so you realize it, we're going to make our destination also analog raw. So notice these numbers are going to be the exact same numbers. And then we have an order mode here. And in our case, we need to swap the word. Another common one you'll see is that they're reversed completely. But in this case, it is a word. And just so we have a little bit of sanity during this interim step, we're also going to put analog raw to analog scale. Now, we haven't actually scaled it yet, but that will get us there. So let's create analog scale. And since this is going to be my final scale value, I am going to make it a real. Now, on your screen, you may occasionally see this analog raw actually go back to that old number. And that's because we have this little bit of conversion in here. But you'll see it done this way a lot. And in the end, analog scale is always going to be that value. Now, analog scale is going to have it in the correct order. And if I slowly bring the sensor in, you see it's gonna nice and linearly go down now. Now we're ready to scale it to our engineering units, 
In the case of this ultrasonic sensor, it's going to be 30 millimeters to 350 millimeters. And we have a lot of videos on scaling for analog signals. And I've created this playlist right here with some helpful tips.